All right, this is a really, I think, fun problem uh, from the book. It's question 2.6, still in the same section. And uh, it says an equation, which I'll show you. We went over it in the lecture video, but uh, I don't write the number associated with the equation. Gives the velocity of an object dropped from rest. At first, when VY is very small, air resistance should be unimportant. And 2.33 should agree with the elementary result vy is g times t for free fall in a vacuum prove that this is the case it gives us a little hint about taylor series we're going to have to use taylor series from calculus to help us solve this problem which we'll review if you don't remember that the first two or three terms are a good approximation when x is small and then when the position of the dropped object is given by 2.35 with the initial velocity being zero, so similarly that it reduces to y is one half gt squared. Okay. So first off, what is equation 2.33? I don't label it like that, but we did go over it in the uh, lecture video. And all that is, is velocity in the y direction is equal to v terminal times a one minus e to the minus t over tau. And if you remember tau, we said tau is just equal to m over b. So we'll also think of this as velocity equaling v terminal times one minus e to the minus t and then we're just going to flip it because the tau's in the denominator. <clears throat> All right, so Taylor series. I plan on doing probably a bigger video talking about conceptually what the Taylor series is. Uh, but basically what the Taylor series does is it allows us to take a function and approximate it with polynomials. And uh, you can get a very good approximation with these. Uh, and... The generally the way without getting into too much detail the way you do this is you do your function evaluated at some point plus f prime times x minus a plus f double prime times x minus a squared all over 2 factorial plus f triple prime evaluated at a times x minus a cubed over three factorial and it looks you can probably see the pattern here once i talk a little bit more about series and sequences i might do a calculus series uh once i talk a little bit more about series and sequences i'll break this up but essentially what you're doing is this and You'd keep doing this forever, uh, but if you want an approximation, then what I just did now will get you pretty, pretty close. And it's pretty, it, it's it's okay to use that approximation. Uh, so what is A? A is what you're centering at. In this case, we'll just let A be zero. Um, and then factorial, you know, three factorial is three times two times one. 2 factorial is 2 times 1. Hopefully you guys are okay with that notation. So, if we want to find the Taylor series for e to negative some variable, in other words, think of it like e to the minus x, we can approximate that as f0 plus f prime at 0 times x that'd be over one there's no need to do that plus f double prime at zero times x squared over two factorial that's just two plus f triple prime at zero plus x cubed over six because three times two times one is six okay well our function is e at zero let's see if we can go ahead and work through this
f of 0 is just 1. And then if we take the derivative, it's negative x to the 0. So that'll be uh, minus x plus the second derivative. That'll give us x squared, so 1 half x squared. And that's because uh, you're just going to get minus e to the minus x. In this case, it's going to be positive because we, this one gave us uh, when we took the derivative. So when you take it again, this turns positive by the chain rule. So we have this alternating uh, signs. <clears throat> minus 1 6 x cubed plus dot dot dot. Okay? So that's our approximation. So, simplifying this, or writing it a little, we would say our velocity as a function of time, V terminal stays times 1 minus, instead of E, I'm going to replace it with the Taylor polynomials. So 1 minus X, but what is X in this case? X is uh, all this stuff. This is our x, okay? In fact, we're really just looking at just, oop. that's our x, okay? So that's going to be minus x, which is tb over m, plus... You can keep filling in the rest. However, just as an approximation, we're, we don't have to do that. So we just did the first two terms. Now, if we work through this, this is V terminal. 1 minus 1 is 0. So that's just going to be times minus TB over M. But if we think about our object in free fall, if we think of a free body diagram, what do we have? We have the weight force. We have our air resistance. Right? And if we worked out the dynamics here, mass times acceleration is equal to, we'll let down be positive. And if we take our terminal velocity, that's when this is zero. So we find V terminal is equal to mg over b. We worked that out in the lecture, but I can also substitute that in. That's not what I wanted to do. You can put that in right here. So now our velocity as a function of time is just what? Well, this is going to be TB over M times MG over B. Okay? And if we look at this, what happens? The B's drop, uh, the B's drop, and the M's drop. So what are we left with? Velocity as a function of time is just g times t. And uh, quick mistake, this should be a positive. I knew it wasn't when I'm when I was here. I looked up here and I'm like, yeah, we have to distribute this negative. But uh, I guess down here I just kept the negative, even though it shouldn't have been. Okay, so. There's your velocity as a function of time. That was the first part. And then it says uh, for equation 2.35, basically do the same thing. All right, well, what is equation 2.35? We worked through this one too. Y as a function of time is V terminal times T plus plus Vy naught minus V terminal tau 1 minus E to the minus T over tau. 
hopefully you guys remember this equation. Uh, we did work through it. This is the 2.35. That, that's what the question is referencing there. <clears throat> so y as a function of time is v terminal times t, but v terminal is mg over b times time plus y naught is zero. So just minus v terminal, which is still mg over b, times tau, but like we said in the beginning, that's m over b, times 1 minus, now e, we found the Taylor polynomials for that, so I'm going to do that. Uh, you could continue, but we're going to just do, we're going to go to the third polynomial for our approximation. Okay. Hopefully you guys are okay with this so far. Um, just remember, if you're, if you're not, you had the one half times x squared, and x was all this stuff. So we, I just squared all of it. Okay. So let's go ahead and see if we can simplify this a little bit. Y as a function of time, how can we simplify that? Well, we still have mgt over b. Uh, let's see, we have a minus here, so I'll say minus m squared g over b squared. Uh, well, if we distribute this negative throughout, we see the ones will drop, so we'll get tb over m minus t squared b squared over 2m squared or y as a function of time is mgt over b if we distribute this what do we get we'll get a minus mgt over b right so one of the m's will cancel here one of the B's will cancel here. And then if I distribute it over here, I get plus, uh, I still have the G there, still have the T squared, but notice the M's will drop and the B's will drop. And then these obviously are the same thing. So finally, Y as a function of time is equal to one half G T squared. There we go. We showed that that does, in fact, work. So pretty straightforward question, I feel. Uh, not too bad. Just uh, know what the var variables are equal to and be okay working with it, doing a little bit of algebra. Really, the reason why I did this one, uh, we've gone through a few. I almost feel like going on to the next section. But the reason why I did this is because it did require us to use the Taylor series. Uh, so worth looking at because that's... That's just a really powerful tool. That's the left hand for a softball, you know, so...